In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a title graphic using Boris Graffiti in Corel Video Studio. Hey, here I am in Corel Video Studio Pro, and I'm going to create a lower thirds title graphic using Boris Graffiti. So let's get to it. Here's Graffiti, dragging it onto the clip. I'm going to customize the filter. The first thing I get is this text window, which allows me to create any text I want. So just going to create something quickly here, appropriate for the background. Alright, so to get an update for the first text that you type, just click update there. You can see it on your video. And from this window alone, I can make lots of different style and uh, format changes. So for example, I can add a drop shadow from this window, get an update on that. I'm going to bring it in a little closer and turn up the softness just a little bit. Too much. And maybe actually push it back a little. Okay. So I've got my text, and now let's create a nice background to put the text on. So I'm going to create a spline primitive. You can see the default spline primitive coming up in Graffiti. If I click on the Path tab, I can change the shape. Let's make this an oval, and let's put some color and style into it. So clicking on Fill, I'm going to change the fill color to a nice red. Um, maybe a little bit bolder red there. I'm going to drop the opacity on this so it's not quite so you know, stark anyway. Let's say 50. Okay, that looks good. Next, let's add a border. So the default is no border, so you have to click on one of these to create one. I'm going to change the style to bevel and the position to outside. Now let's increase the width so you can see where that is. There it is. And let's also change the uh, edge color to match the fill. So let's make this another red, maybe a little darker. And let's change the highlight to yellow. Okay, and I can even change where the light's coming from. Also know that you can animate all of these parameters too. I chose constant because I don't want to animate them, but if you wanted to, you could change the interpolation of the keyframes from this little square here. Okay, so that looks good. Now let's uh, add a drop shadow. Uh, looks like we have a little bit of one already. Let's just make it a little bit better. Bring down the opacity. Turn up the distance and the softness too, of course. Okay, so we get a cool um, almost like double fill effect from the drop shadow. Okay, that looks good. Now, let's uh, go back into my timeline here, reposition some of these things, put the text on top of the fill element. Now, if I zoom out, I can reposition the tri uh, oval easier. Now, it doesn't quite fill the bottom of the screen, so I'm going to just click and drag on these handles here and rescale the shape. And these are all vector-based shapes, so they scale without getting pixelated or blocky. It looks about good, maybe a little lower. Good. And now I can put the text um, in the lower third, but let's actually hide the text for now because I want to do more things to this background. Now I want to create two other ovals, and I could go through the same process, adding another spline primitive, but it's so much faster to just duplicate the track by holding control D. Okay, so now I have the exact same oval on top of itself here. Watch this, I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. So, really quick way to do a nice layering effect. And one more time, got to do these things in threes, right? Okay, so there's a nice little layered oval backdrop. And let's create a, another shape backdrop for the text. This time we are going to use a rectangle shape again. Notice only the shape has changed. All of my bevel and lighting styles have remained the same. So we can turn the text back on. And we want this rectangle to be the lower third. So let's shrink it down. Position it about so and zoom it out. Okay. And now I can position the text uh, more finely. 
Okay, nice. So I've already got a nice looking uh, text effect here. I'm just going to add a couple other elements. I'm going to duplicate the text. Again, another shortcut to make sure styles match. This is going to be my, uh, you know, sort of time recording stamp. Going to go back into font. Let's change this so it's uh, centered. Didn't make a huge difference, but, you know, better safe than sorry. Shrink that down. Let's uh, change the drop shadow. Bring it tighter on this particular one. Looks good. Update. Okay, so this little, whoop, make sure I got the right thing selected here. So this little piece I'm going to put in the upper right corner. Normally I'd put it in the upper left corner, but her head's there. It kind of conflicts with the composition. So I'm going to put it there instead. And check this out. If I twirl down and select the face track, I can click on this backdrop feature, just making this checkbox enabled, and I get an automatic backdrop on the text. What's cool is that it pulls the latest spline style that I had, so it's going to match automatically what I had here. Now, if I want to change those settings, I can just click on backdrop and, you know, do whatever I want here. So let's uh, let's change that up a little bit. I do want to bring that border down, since it's you know smaller here. I don't need to call as much attention to it. I do also want to drop the opacity on the fill a little bit more. That looks good. And here's another nice feature. If you go back into the face level, you can rescale the uh, overall shape and even shift it around if it doesn't line up the way you want it by default. Okay, so I've got a whole nice effect here. And check this out. If I go back into the text, maybe make some changes to the style or size now, the whole thing is going to automatically update to the new text size. So it's a live effect. Okay, see so how it automatically updated there. Okay, that looks good. Let's do one more piece, just a company logo. I'm going to just duplicate that whole thing again. Maybe put it here. And let's say, I don't know, this is courtesy of the CBC Broadcasting Company. I don't know. I think that's a real company, maybe in Canada or something. Okay, so that looks all right. Let's update. There we go. I can even make this a little bigger, I think. Good. Now, let's change the fill in the backdrop. Let's make this a gradient instead of a solid color. Here's the gradient menu. Check this out. You can change all of these colors and angles on the gradient too. Uh, that looks good. Going to get rid of the border. Don't need it. And let's go ahead and reposition the face a little bit. Perfect. Okay, there it is. So I created in just a couple minutes a nice background or titling effect in Boris Graffiti in Corel Studio. So if you liked what you saw here and want to try it out for yourself, you can actually download a free, fully functional trial version from our website, and that's at borisfx.com.